G'day, I'm Adam Hills. Welcome to The Last Leg, Correspondence. In a post-truth world where journalists, pollsters and experts have proven themselves unable to explain what the hell is going on, it's time someone else had a go. So we're sending Last Leg Correspondents outside of this media bubble of a studio into the real world with real people. I mean, you know, what do those two idiots in there know? Ponzi media types with no concept of what goes on outside their frappuccinos. We can Oi. still hear you! Sorry. Anyway, we sent Tez Ilias out to get a handle on radicalisation. Hi, I'm Tez Ilias. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm openly Asian. I'm British. Oh, and I'm Muslim. So I've got all of that going on. For those of you that don't know that much about us Muslims, you'll recognise us from that hit TV show, The News. It's an interesting time being Muslim. A lot of people, even the ones out there with unrestricted access to the internet, they think being Muslim is all animal cruelty, oppressing women and claiming benefits. Um, what those people haven't realised is, there are downsides. It's not all Shisha and Nando's. I jest, but one thing I don't understand is these criminal scum who commit these heinous acts of terror, apparently they didn't know of Islam. That's my religion, isn't it? I don't get it, like, it really messes with me, it's beyond my understanding. Like, how can someone associate something that's so beautiful to me with something that disgusting? I want to try and understand. I want to find out how, why does anyone born in our country end up that crazy? Why does anyone become a radicalised extremist? Neil, are you a Muslim? I'm not a Muslim, oh, no. you just like the look? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah, the, the beard. <laughs> Why do you think people become extremists? To be honest, I don't know. I think once you've got a really strong set of ideas, if, if you want other people to believe them, it's quite easy to make somebody believe what you want them to believe, if you say the right things. What would you say to those young lads who, like, potentially could be on that verge of becoming extreme or radical or something? Stop being balanced. Is there anything, mate, that would make you in your life maybe then did that tip you over the edge, make you radical, a bit extreme? <laughs> Marriage and kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the old ball and chain. The old ball and chain, yeah. Well, that's given me a bit of an idea. However, as much as I agree with Michael Gove that we don't need experts, <laughs> maybe we should just go see an expert. So you are Professor Abbas? Indeed, I am. And yes. what is your job title? So I'm a senior research fellow here at uh, the Royal United Services Institute. So you're Muslim, I'm Muslim, right? And I'm trying to figure out who these people are that are using our religion to do these awful things. Professor, who, who are these people? We know that um, these radicalised young people tend to have a certain demographic background, certain histories in terms of domestic violence, uh, criminality even, uh, certain problems in terms of psychological issues. What is their journey from the beginning to then committing an act of violence? So it starts with questions searching deep questions that have no immediate answers. They can't quite find them in their mosques or among community leaders, so they go to the internet. And the internet is full of all sorts of misinformation. And, and it is there that it's quite easy to slip into to very narrow thinking. Mm -hmm. And the manipulation. Uh, yeah, and then, and then later on down the line, there's a connection made with a radicalizer who grooms them and brings them into their fold. And in the case of terrorism, there's a real world connection. How much of a factor is foreign policy or British foreign policy in people becoming radicalised? Well, it's certainly a big issue. So it's an issue, yes. probably not the only issue. Because we can, we can see that people who are angry, marginalised and voiceless get angry about foreign policy. It doesn't necessarily mean that they will go all the way to violence. They can find other ways of expressing their grievances. Yeah, yeah, because I get angry about some of the stuff that our countries in sure. the Middle East, but like the Prophet Muhammad said, the pen is mightier than the sword, yes. or the keyboard in, in Yeah, so you, you would rather write a letter to one of the newspapers? And... Yeah, or tweet. OK, I think I understand a little bit more about why and how these people do it. But what can we do about it? Looking online, people seem to suggest that I, as a British Muslim, should be doing more to stop extremists. But I don't know any extremists. Are other people trying to stop them? And no one's told me about it? Asalaamu Alaikum, Mamro. Salam. Uh, bro, I'm just wondering what have you done to combat extremists today? Today, I have done nothing. How many terrorists have you caught uh, today? Uh, today? Yeah. Um, none. Oh. Yeah. So what have you been up to? Uh, studying. 
um, raising my children. Right. Um, not personally knowing any terrorists. Oh, that probably doesn't help. No. How are ordinary Muslims meant to stop terrorism? Like, we're not James Bond or Jack Bauer, are we? True. We, we just, we live our day-to-day -day life. It's not like we're like, okay, today let's go combat something. It's more, okay, today like, I'm going to I'll work. I'll have breakfast now. Exactly. On the way to work, I'll get a terrorist. Mm -hmm. And then during my lunch break, I'll stop an extremist. It's not yeah. like that, is it? No, it's not. I mean, some of these questions are a bit weird. Like, what is any community doing to combat any of their criminals? Hi, guys. I'm just wondering what you two are doing about embezzlement in the financial industry. Hi, guys. I'm just wondering what you're doing to discourage embezzlement in the financial industry. Oh, wow. Hiya, mate. I was wondering what you're doing about embezzlement in the financial industry so no one wants to take any responsibility. It's weird. What are you doing about the Daily Mail? No answer? No answer. But who is actually out there doing anything to try and stop this from happening in the first place? I've come here to see Nick Taylor from Foundation for Peace. Nick, what, what is this place? Well, this is the uh, Tim Parry Jonathan Ball Peace Centre. It was set up 22 years ago after uh, an IRA bombing in the town of Warrington. So we've been around quite some time now, really, doing quite a lot of work in trying to prevent and resolve and respond to violent conflict. What do you do specifically here to make young people turn away from extremism or radicalisation? I think some of the things that we do is they, they meet people they never met before. They often meet people who've been involved in extremism, who've ex-terrorists, people who've actually been involved. They, they see and hear from them and they realise that violent, part, well, they realize violence never works. Because there's a lot of criticism and a lot of people out there like Piers Morgan, Katie Hopkins, yeah. all of that sort of lot, they say that Muslims should be doing more. What's your experience of that? I don't think this has anything to do with Muslims or religious. This is about ideologies. Sometimes it's religious ideology, sometimes it's political. Sometimes it's just people who are being influenced by people who are more powerful than themselves and really leading them down the wrong path. We have some amazing things happening. I had a lad here a couple of years ago, he was heading to Syria, and I asked him what, what changed here, and he told me that before he came in, he felt like he was a sheep, and then when he went out, he was a shepherd. And the big thing he said was, now I can think for myself. And that's what we do here. We help people think for themselves. Excellent. Thank you, Nick. That's been really useful. Thank you so much for having me. Great to have you. What we've learned today is that radicalization and extremism is an incredibly complex phenomenon. What we've also learned is that even though these monsters affiliate their actions with Islam, Muslims, we don't understand it. We hate it. Honestly, if you could snap our fingers and stop it from happening, we would, just like you snap your fingers, and stop Jeremy Hunt or World Hunger or Mumford and Sons. Of course you would. Honestly, if I could have a one-to-one -one with ISIS, I'd be all like, cut out, lads. You're like, proper strong. Stop it. Is it true you said you wanted to do a play because you found uh, touring and doing stand-up very lonely? Very lonely. Are you it's joking? Very, yeah, yes. Oh, it's your tour no. support. <laughs> I find it lonely and depressing. <laughs>